so now we are focusing on um, on making the F4 help. So instead of you know we fixing up the file name here, we can dynamically select the file name uh, during the runtime from the selection state. So for that, we'll be going for this parameters, and uh, we'll select this p underscore file type. Uh, there is a uh, one uh, file name. Uh, so that file length name data type. Okay, this data type of this is like for example C. I'll just give it as C. But here we'll go for at selection screen on value request. On selection screen on value request for this P underscore file. Now what is at selection screen on value request is it will work only for that particular field. Okay, this at selection screen will work for only for that particular field. So we'll call a function module called F4 underscore file name. F4 underscore file. So in this F4 underscore file name, we have something like exporting that and coming exporting program name SRSTC drop dynpro SRSTC dynpro. Field name. The field name is uh, something which we'll uh, comment. But this P underscore file. Okay. This P underscore file is something which we have to pick. So this P underscore file we have given randomly as C, right? But the data type should be exactly same as this file name which we have in the function model. So how do we get the data type of this file name? We have to double click on this file name, F4 underscore file name, function model. Let's go into it. And then for the file name, there is a parameter called uh, file name. File name. So for this, there is an associated type called this one. So the same file name associated type should be, should be copied and we'll come back. And we need to assign the same to this this one the uh, parameter because with the same properties if we uh, if we create a p underscore file name a file a parameter and then that value is been passed to file underscore name so it will be easy for us to add. Now at selection screen on value request is something which we need to understand. And if we have started at selection screen on value request because we have introduced some other event there. We need to mandatorily use startup selection here. After this here, we have to start the startup selection. Startup selection. Now here in this we have to pass this p underscore file. Instead of this, we'll we'll give p underscore file. Now what happens is dynamically we can select the file. So I'll create a file name. So let's say I have selected this and uh, saved it in some desktop. Okay, MK zero is the file name. So what we can do now is now I have saved it in MK zero one. So we'll go ahead with execute this program. And here dynamically we can select the file name. So we we'll, we can go ahead and uh, select the file name. So we'll go for the libraries, documents. And in the documents, we can see this MK01. In this type, this is the MK01 file. We can select it up and execute. Okay. So what we what it is what it is saying is we have a type conflict. So we well, let's fix that type type conflict now. So for type conflict, what the type conflict is? The system is saying that you know this p underscore file has got some property i b i t p a r m s something, but here the file name in the g a underscore upload has some other property. What is that we have? File name is a string. So we need to create another 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 uh, 
field of type string. So let's create the s underscore file name type string. S underscore file name type string. So now what happens here is we'll go with S underscore file name is equal to P underscore file. Because see, when we're trying, trying to give P underscore file, this, this, this property and the file name property are different. So that's the reason it's, it's giving an error. So let's go for S underscore file name. So now let's select this file. Let's now it says hello. So now you'll be able to see this and we can access this records. Okay, so I didn't change the file. Actually, the file values have to be changed. I need to remove that extra fields. Yeah, this is done. So we have successfully uploaded. So first time, because the properties are varying, in GA underscore upload, the file name has a property of string. And P underscore file, which we have to pass here, has a file file path, a file property as IB, IB, ERMS, and the hyphen path, which might have a different uh, property. This will have a property of uh, 128 length, and it's a pure character. This is what we have. So this is fixed. So this is how you can uh, write the logic. You can access this program from zdxc underscore mk01 underscore upload. And your file also got uh, the previous. So there are a lot of advantages of session method. At the same time, for call transaction method also, we have some advantages. But we need to understand which session, which method we have to go for a, a particular scenario. If a client gives us a scenario, we should be able to distinguish whether uh, you know call transaction would be better or session method. If you have less amount of data and when we have the master data, okay, simple data, simple and uh, simple uploads, we can always go further call transaction method because it runs instantly and on the uh, uh, you know in the in the um, in the runtime itself we can fix up the issues and then we can run it. But if you have huge amount of data and we would like to run it somewhere sometime later. We want to schedule it for a long time, later time and all. We'll go for session method. So what we'll do is we will go ahead and implement the session method for the same program. So you know for only okay. So let me show. Let me explain you that in this session method, loading the data from the flat file to internal table would be same. Okay, and internal table to screens uh, recording also will be same. I mean, like uh, the, the, the process of internal table to screens when we load it. So here, instead of going for the call transaction method, we'll go for session method. For session method, instead of this uh, rewriting that, that uh, program, we'll not write that code call transaction mk01 using uh, BDC data uh, mode, a, uh, mode a update a. So this is all there now. So this mode A update A. This will not be there. This logic will not be there. So what we'll simply write is we'll write B 
pdc underscore open underscore group this would this would be this is a function model these are the function models there will be three function models which we are going to use three function models pdc open underscore group and within the loop end loop within the loop end loop in between the loop end loop at the end of the end loop okay at the end of the end loop what we'll do is we'll go ahead with the pdc underscore insert then at the end we'll go for pdc underscore close underscore group so we'll have these three function modules which needs to be added into the into the uh, program so we will not call the call transaction. It's a, this is a major technical difference. Okay. So there are functional uh, advantages of uh, BDC session method, functional advantages of call transaction. But technically from the above point of view, this is the major difference. We will not write the call transaction method, call transaction command, and we will go for this BDC. And it, after executing, it will not be showing you anything. Okay. It will not show you any output or something like that. Then you have to go to SM35. Uh, a session will be created. This session, which which gets created in the SM35, needs to be run or executed. So when we execute this, then the same process will be uploaded. So we can also have the packets of data. So as of now, we'll go for a single packet of data and we'll see how it loads. Okay. So let's understand the PDC session method. So let me take the same program because uh, this is something which you have done very thoroughly so let's let's take the same program and i'll focus on the session concept So we'll go for BDC session method. So instead of directly copy, so session of two. We'll go with the same program here. Till here, everything is same. When you have these parameters and selections and policies. So this all the same. Till this function now. So same. Now after this, we'll go for BDC pattern. We we'll click on pattern and we we'll call this BDC underscore open underscore open underscore. So when we have done this, let's go ahead with uncomment this exporting. We'll go, for, we'll go ahead with client name should be there and uh, group. Group name should be something like that. I'll go for the group name as DXC team. Okay, so DXC team. Anything can be there. So keep user. User is SY. You name that's why I have done. You name that's it. Okay. Whole data keep uh, program name is SYC prop. 
So rest of the things you can just ignore them. Okay. So group name is mandatory actually. And the exceptions we can uncomment them because if we ex if we have an exception that automatically raises. So for the each one of them, if the see, let's say if client is equals to invalid is one, then it means that size of RC is equals to one. So if size of RC is equals to one, that we that issue will be raised. Okay. I'll explain you that one, uh, story about the you know error exception handling. Okay. So it is here. Now after this, we'll write the loop statement. Loop at id underscore when into w underscore when. We'll go ahead with this. Refresh PDC data. So this entire recording will be the same as we have done. Okay. And then after this, we will not have this call transaction, but instead we'll call the pattern and we'll go ahead with the open VDC underscore insert. Okay, VDC underscore insert. Now in this, we'll go ahead with the T code. That T code must be correct, exactly the same thing which we have done. So we are we are going for the MK01, right? So MK01 in capital letter. And then comment this, let me go for this. IT underscore. This one is a BDC time process. So we'll go for IT underscore BDC data. IT underscore BDC data. So we have this, and uh, then we'll go ahead with the end loop. After the end loop, we have to call the BDC underscore close underscore group. BDC underscore close underscore group. So this one we don't have to call anything. We just have to call it and leave it. That's it. After this BDC underscore close underscore group, we need to copy this uh, forms, the forms which we have, the standard forms. We just have to go ahead with that. So we have the standard forms. Now here we'll go ahead with this. And we'll execute. Then, okay, we need to give the file name. The file name you have to pass it. Okay, let me let me first change the file name because uh, the data that we have in the file is already been uploaded. So let me change that. Yeah, this is the MK01, right? So let me change this as something like C. So Zero one two is what we have. So let me change that to zero. It's good. Hello. So once it's been done. Nothing will happen. You can't see. Actually, we can we can uh, put a pop-up message that you know, in successfully session is created or something like that. We can create a, we can create a message here. But anyways, like we'll do that later. So what is our intention is to see how the process happens. So we go to SM35, and in the SM35, you can see that DX DXC team that session is created here. So select that and click on process. So when we are processing. 
now you can dynamically select whether it should be processed in the foreground that is a type a or type uh, e or type uh, n no screen display no screen display means everything happens in the back but i'd select the process in the foreground only let's see that process so now it will open up that file open up the screen and say enter i think we have not changed the last value in the file i didn't change that as uh, the two values have to be removed actually here i need to remove this as keep it as inr This is done now. So once it's been done, we can go to the log and we can see DXC team log. You can select that and uh, go for the session overview. And if you go for session overview and go for the log, okay, DXC team, you double click on this. It will take you to the log and in which in this log, you can see how many transactions. If you see here, three transactions have been read, three transactions have been processed zero with errors zero with the transactions deleted so these are all the options that we have here and by default it is asynchronous so this session method by default is asynchronous so automatically if even if one file fails one record fails uh, it will go to the next screen and upload it so this is what we have and the screen number is what we have here so the batch input has been added so uh, we can create we can see the log clearly we don't have to Worry about uh, what I, what happened in the backend log. So see, uh, first there is there was an error, right? So in the error, what we have is the thousand currency key thousand is not defined because currency key have to be given as INR, which we didn't give. So that's the reason we uh, we changed it. We changed it and then uploaded. That's the reason we can we couldn't see any errors here. Otherwise, if you we could have found the errors in the down. This is what we have in the session method. Session method is slightly different from the call transaction method but conceptually it is different and technically also we had to do some changes to uh, make that uh, indications here so. okay so this is about the call transaction method